Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Antergos 17.3. So I'm going to be installing the GNOME desktop environment, but there are different ones to choose from and the installation process will be the same. And then after Antergos has been installed, I will review it. So let's get started. So a little background information about Antergos is that it is based off of Arch Linux, and it is different from Manjaro in that it is basically pure Arch Linux so that all of the newest Arch Linux repository packages come here when they're released on the actual Arch Linux distribution. But in Manjaro, Manjaro checks it before they actually release it to their users. And it is also a rolling release so that you will get lots of updates. It is multilingual and it comes with lots of applications that are essential to average users like music players, video players, browsers, stuff like that. And they also have a really good support and community with lots of forums and answers to about any question you could have. And now there are actually six different desktops in Antergos. GNOME, KDE, XFCE, Mate, or Mate, Cinnamon, and the last one is not really a desktop environment, but it is Openbox, the window manager. So that means that you have a large variety of options to choose from. So let's download it. Okay, now the first step to install it is to, of course, download it. So go to antergos.com. And now here, you want to click on the download button. It will be the second item in the menu at the top. Just scroll down. You have some information about it here. Um, you also have two different ISOs. The first one is the live ISO, and this is the default one. And it comes with everything fully there. And it is good if you want to give it a test and live boot it. The other ISO is the minimal version. And this is a smaller file size, which will save bandwidth. It's good for slow connections, and it's good for older and less powerful hardware. So to actually download it, scroll down and click on latest install media. Now here you want to select either live ISO or minimal ISO. And under that, you can either select the full ISO file or the torrent. So I'm going to use the default ISO. So I'm going to click on that, and it should start downloading automatically. Good, so I'll resume the video when I have finished flashing it to a USB and then booting that. So when you first boot up Antergos, you actually have three options to choose from. The first one is to boot from hard disk, and that is if you already have an operating system on your hard disk and you want to load that up, Instead of Antergos, you want to use that. I don't know why you would use it, but yep, you can do that. The second option is to start it live. So if you start it live, you could either test it or install it to your hard disk, which is what I'm going to use. And the third option is the non-graphical boot. And this is a option if you want to have a headless setup, which means it doesn't have a display to look at. So I'm going to use the second option and boot that up. So when Antergos boots up for the first time, it will start checking automatically for an update to Nietzsche, which is the installer for this distribution. So once it's done, it will boot the application up, and this is what it looks like. And if you want to try it, of course, click on this button here to boot it without making any changes to your computer. If you want to install it to your hard drive, click install. And as I mentioned earlier, Antergos is multilingual, which means it includes a large variety of different languages. There are a ton of languages here. I'm going to use English, and to um, go forward, you want to click this button right here. And make sure you meet all these criteria here, so at least 8GB on your hard drive, 
plugged into our power source, connected to the internet, and that Nietzsche is up to date, and this will happen automatically when you boot it up. So that's good if there are four green checks. Next, you want to select your country and territory. And then you want to select your time zone. And you have all these different places here. Next. And then you can select your keyboard style. So I'm going to use the regular English keyboard. And you can, of course, you can test it out down here to make sure everything works. Okay, good. Next. And now here is where you can select the desktop environment for your computer. So base is the CLI or command line interface. So there will be no GUI here. And then you have Cinnamon, which comes with Linux Mint. GNOME, which is the default one for Antragos. KDE, Mate or Mate, Openbox, and XFCE. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using GNOME. So just select whichever one you want here. Next. And now here, you can select the packages or settings that you want right now. So I would recommend selecting the Arch User Repository or AUR support so that you can install packages from there. Bluetooth support, web browser if you want it, these fonts, and of course you can select whichever browser you want here. Flash plugins are optional, depends on if you want it or not. Um, then you have your long-term support version of the kernel. I recommend selecting LibreOffice for your Office suite. And then if you want to run Windows applications on your Antragos computer, you can select Steam Plus Play on Linux. And then of course you have other options here like firewalls and sharing your files. So I'm going to select these ones right here. Make sure it looks good. And then next. It'll give you a disclaimer about the AUR, just close that. Now here is the partitioning part of the installation process. So if you have no operating system currently installed on the hard, hard disk, just click the first option, which is Erase Disk and Install Antragos. And then of course here you can select if you want to use specific partitioning scheme or encrypt it or, you know, uh, mount your home to a external drive if you want that. And if you already have something installed, you will have another option up here saying that do you want to delete the other one and install this one? So you have that option there too. And the last option is to manually select the where you want to be installed. I'm not going to go into that in this video, but you can do that if you want to. So I'm just going to use this option right here. Next. And just make sure that you've selected the correct hard drive. And here is a overview or recap of what you selected for your settings. And everything looks good. Hit next and click yes. So in the background, Antragos is installing. But here you can create your user account. So you can just set that up right now. And then a username. password and then you can choose to either log in automatically when you turn your screen on or to log in every time so just save that and it'll install so just let that run I'll resume when it's finished installing okay so Antragos has finished installing now the installation did take longer than expected but I think that is due to the reason that I selected so many different applications to install. It, it took about 20 minutes, but I believe that time will be different depending on which ones you select. And it's giving me a confirmation saying that, do you want to restart your system now? I'm going to click yes and restart it. So this is going to be the review part of the video. So let's start off by logging in. So this is the login screen right here, and I guess you just click enter, and it brings you here. 
enter your password, and there it is. Okay, so Antragos has fully loaded up. This is what the desktop looks like. And now let's start by looking at some of the applications that come pre-installed. So we have an archive manager, books, Bracero for music, calculator, calendar, cheese, which is for taking pictures through webcam, chromium, which is because I selected it in the installation process, CMake, which is for building and processing packages and making them from source, contacts, desktop search, your disk stuff, documents, file manager, font viewer, some driver managers, image viewer, the LibreOffice suite, all here, logs, printers, maps, and then you, I guess you have a password manager here, looks like, that's pretty handy. Um, Pigeon, which is a messenger, print settings, pulse audio, QT5 settings, and QT5 is the window manager that comes pre-installed. Screenshot, search, settings, software update, sound recorder, system monitor, or task manager, terminal, text editor, transmission, which is for torrents, tweak tool, for installing themes and icons, videos, and weather. So now let's open up a few applications. So we have a calculator here, everything works as planned. Calendar, and I believe here you can actually sync it up with an external account here. Yep. So you can add any account, including Google, Microsoft Exchange, stuff like that. Chromium, make sure that loads up properly. Okay, good. And it actually comes pre-installed with the GNOME Shell integration um, extension, which lets you install other extensions from the tweak the gnome tweaks website the gnome look look up document viewer I guess for PDFs and stuff for disks you can set and view ex the exact partitions so you can see what happened here and you can also look at the CD slash DVD drive Um, file manager. You get the default GNOME file manager here. Yep, everything works there. Image viewer. Let's see, let's open up LibreOffice Writer. Hmm, let's try that again. Oh, never mind, it opened up here. That was a little buggy. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Okay, we have all of these, um, okay, QT5 settings, just take a look at that. Yep, so you got a preview and you can select exactly what you want. And let's look, actually look at the software update center here. Okay, that's good. So, I believe, I guess, this is a graphical representation of Pac-Man, which is the Package Manager for Arch Linux Distributions. Now I'm going to take a look at the themes and icons that come selected by default. So let's open up the GNOME Tweak tool. And I remember seeing something about Numix in the installation, and yep, here it is. So the GTK theme is Numix Frost Lite. Icons is Numix Square, and it also comes pre-installed with the other Numix icons. Cursor is default GNOME. Shell theme is shell theme is Numix Frost, and it also comes pre-installed with Dash to Dock, which is a very popular extension that lets you bring this dock right here to the desktop. By default, it only appears in the Activities Overview, but I guess it came pre-installed with this. That's very handy because I install that almost immediately with every GNOME distribution. For fonts, you have Contrarel and Monospace for the terminal. And everything else is normal. So let's just change the background. See which one's come pre-installed. So this was the one in the installation right here. 
And then you also get all these different ones, and I'm sure lots of these... Oh yeah, lots of these are Antragos provided, but the ones at the bottom are just standard gnome ones. So that's good that they include some different ones. That looks really pretty. And finally, let me take a look at the um, uh, CPU usage. So let's go to resources. It looks like it is using about 10% on standby. It is using 800 megabytes of memory. And then no network. So that is a little bit more compared to other GNOME desktops, as GNOME's system requirements are 500 megabytes for idle usage, but this is 800. So that's it. Great. Okay, everyone, that's going to be it for this video. Overall, I think Antragos is an extremely easy to use version of Arch Linux. It's basically stock Arch Linux with a more user-friendly installer, but other than that, it's smooth like Arch Linux and comes with just the right amount of stuff installed. And I highly recommend it. I have also tried out the KDE version of it, and that also works very smoothly, one of the best KDE distributions I've used. So yeah, if you're looking to give Arch Linux a try because of its stability, performance, and vast amount of packages available, you should use Antragos if you're just starting. Okay everyone, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome Linux videos about distributions and apps, and thanks for watching!